Hey guys, this is Chris, and today I am finally making the wax seals uh, for my posters that I've been waiting to make for so long. Um, first up, we've got a stamp that I'm making for the Saint Honoré print, which if you can see that in there, that's, that's a little loaf of bread uh, with a fancy H and some filigree around the edges. Uh, the color of it is green because it, it's, it's green because I use a two-part poxy putty called Green Stuff. You mix part A with part B, it's yellow and blue, basic color theory right there. You mix it together, it forms green. And um, after it dries, you get a very hard little resin thing. It's used for building miniatures and all sorts of stuff. It's great to have around the house. Uh, you can also build utility things like little hooks and stuff out of it. It's crazy. It paints really nice too. So what I've done with these, since I've used the green stuff to create Honoré, to create a replacement for my usual skull with the number 13 stamp, and for this little owl that I made out of some extra green stuff, um, what I've done is I've taken those and I've put them in little little barriers, little dams that are made out of plasticine putty, um, and in this case a cute little plastic cuff that I got off of some Teflon tape. And uh, it actually works really well with silicone. The silicone doesn't stick, so it, may, it, it makes a really great barrier to pour the silicone into. So what I'm going to do is to mix up my two-part silicone mix, uh, mold-making mix, I get it from Alumalite. I use High Strength One. Um, it's flexible, but not too flexible. Um, I accidentally ordered High Strength Three about a week ago or two weeks ago, and it was just way too flexible. So I've got some of that, and I plan to do some mold making later on. So I'll, I'll use it for that. But as far as uh, making my seals, uh, the High Strength One, um, I like the little bit of flexibility that you get with it, and also uh, as a silicone base, it's also remarkably heat resistant, which is really good when I'm doing a lot of these seals, because sealing wax gets very hot. So now that I've got my green stuff to create basically a positive image, um, in other words, I sculpt it to look like what I want the stamp to look like once it's been stamped. In other words, this is the image that I want to see in my wax when I'm done stamping. I've built up a little dam around it using plasticine clay, and now they're basically ready to, um, to receive uh, the mold-making rubber. So over here on my scale, I've got 10 grams of part one. This is part one in the big tub. These things mix 10 to 1 typically. It's a nice easy, easy ratio to work with. So I've got 10 grams inside of a 1 gram cup, all right? And that gives me 11 grams down here. Oh, excuse me, I just teared it. All right. So I tear the scale, that brings it to zero. Actually, I turned it off, and I'm going to turn it on. Okay, we're at zero. And I know because of the prep that I did before starting filming right here that this 11 grams, well, it's 10 grams of part one and one gram of cup. To this, I'm going to add one gram of the part two. Part two is the catalyst, which is actually going to cause the, uh, the mold-making rubber to harden. So I'm going to mix this. I'm going to have about 30 minutes of working time, which is typically way more than what I actually need. And uh, after that, it's about 18 to 24 hours before it cures and I can demold it. Uh, my experience is in working with something as small as this, um, yeah, generally 18 hours and, and it's good. Uh, the risk of demolding early is that you might have a skin on the outside of it that feels solid, but once you pop it out, you realize that it's kind of like an eclair and you've still got a gooey center. So I'm going to pass the camera over here, and uh, what I'm going to do now is to my 10 ounces of rubber, again, it says 11 ounces down right here, but I know that it's 10 ounces of rubber. To this, I'm going to add one ounce of my catalyst, and hopefully I don't overpour because then I get to start trying to compensate things. But just little by little, I'm going to add a touch of that catalyst, okay? And you see, that does not take a lot of catalyst at all, if you can get in on there. You see there's a little haze of pink, um, where just over on the right side, there's a little bubble right there. But you can see, um, at least when you're looking at it not through a camera, you can see that there's a pink cast to it. So what I'll do now, that I've got the, uh, the 12 ounces that I was looking for, again, or excuse me, grams, one gram of cup, 10 grams of part A silicone, one gram of catalyst. For this, I'm going to mix it up. And I am going to mix, and I am going to mix, and I'm going to mix. I want to be careful not to introduce air into here as bubbles. Bubbles can turn up 
in bad places in your mold. Uh, if I were working on an industrial scale, there's actually, um, well, even at this small scale, to tell you the truth, there are additives that you can add to this that help to eliminate bubbles. But on an industrial scale, there's also things that'll uh, vacuum uh, your mold in order to get rid of any bubbles that are in there. So you want to scrape the stick. You want to make sure that you've got no remaining stripes. Uh, you don't want this to look like fudge twirl. You want it to be homogenous, homogenous all the way through. And yeah, this is, this is part of the exciting world of being an artist, mixing, mixing silicone that wants to be really fussy. Um, really want to scrape the sides um, because if any of the uh, if any of the part A remains in here without being mixed in with the uh, the catalyst uh, it'll never harden and if that gets involved in your uh, in your mold you're gonna have a soft spot that literally you'll be able to just dip out with your thumb um, it'll it'll never harden potentially it's gonna ruin whatever it is that you've just worked on. Now uh, I mentioned earlier that plasticine clay, this blue plasticine clay, um, is what I'm using to build up the dams. Um, in the course of mold making um, and researching mold making I have learned that um, Lego, Lego bricks make really good dams for, for mold making. Um, you can put them around whatever it is that you want to take a cast of I've seen people do it with tiny toys, um, jewelry, Lego figures, uh, actual Lego bricks, making their own casts of Lego bricks for whatever reason. Um, but um, Lego makes a great mold making dam because they simply break apart at the end of it and you can reuse them again. So my camera person probably doesn't know this right now, but I've got plans to go get a small box of Lego when I start doing a bit more mold making for this uh, little sculpture that I've got in mind, but that's a, that's a project to come later in the year. So I've got, I've got more bubbles in here than I'm, than I'm happy with, but I'm just going to have to go with it. So next step is to just slowly pour, and I want to pour as much down the side as possible down into my mold and let it just slowly do its thing, cover things up. The reason you don't want to do it in the middle is because sometimes a bubble is going to form when you pour, uh, which is why you want to do it slowly. Um, by pouring down the side as much as possible, you minimize the chance that you're going to end up with a bubble in the middle, or the most important part of what it is that you're, that you're casting. All right, and... Now there are some little bubbles in here, but I think most of them are on the surface. Uh, from here I'm going to move over to the, to the next one. I may not have enough material in here to pour the owl today. Um, so I'm going to put that on a back burner. And on another casting project in the future, uh, I'll simply get it ready for pouring. Because uh, typically you end up with too much as opposed to not enough. If you've got not enough, that's, that's a bit of poor planning. Um, Actually, for what I was hoping to do today, this is probably about spot on. Um, and that's something just to put in the, the mental catalog. About 10 grams of part A is good enough for two of my typical um, wax seals. All right, and I've got a little bit left over here. I'm not gonna scrape the sides too much. You've got to account for a bit of waste in using this. The reason I'm not gonna scrape the sides too much is because that's likely where my, uh, my part A is lurking. And um, again, if the, if the part A doesn't have the catalyst, well, there it is on the side of the cup, um, the part A is never gonna get hard and I don't wanna pour that into um, where I'm making a cast. So uh, fortunately, with, with a 30 minute working time before it starts to solidify and then the 18 to 24 hour cure time, uh, 
Um, some of the bubbles, well, they are going to rise because it is, uh, it's, it's really thick and viscous, but it is a liquid. So the bubbles are going to come to the top. Um, I'm periodically going to come by with my little popsicle stick tool or a needle tool and uh, just pop those um, so I don't have to look at them. More aesthetically pleasing. But um, Anyway, in about 18 to 24 hours, I'm going to demold these and hopefully I've got two really good wax seals. Um, once they do come out and I've verified that they, they look the way that I want them to, uh, the next step is going to be to make some test stamps inside of the uh, sealing wax that I just bought. So, wow, I imagine this was pretty boring and rambling, but, uh, but anyway, this is the excitement of being a swinging international artist with tools and all the various weird things that we work with. Hope you enjoyed it.